everyone, this is Josie from firstthecoffee.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to crochet the combo stitch dishcloth. This pattern uses the said stitch, which is a combination of the single crochet, the half double crochet, and the double crochet stitch. The finished size is approximately 7 inches tall by 7.5 inches wide. And although gauge isn't important for this type of crochet pattern, if you do like to have a gauge to work with, a 4 inch by 4 inch swatch in a half double crochet stitch is 15 stitches wide by 11 rows tall. For this pattern, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, and a small skein of worsted weight cotton yarn. It'll take about 65 yards of yarn to make this dish cloth. I've used the Lily Sugar and Cream yarn for this particular dishcloth, but any worsted weight cotton yarn will work for this pattern. All of the information for this pattern along with the written pattern is available on my website and I'll provide a link for that down in the description below. To start the dishcloth, you're going to want to make a slip knot and then chain 29 stitches. If you would like to change the size of the dishcloth, your foundation chain needs to be a multiple of three with two added to the end of that. Okay, once you have your foundation chain completed, starting in the second chain from your hook, you're going to want to do a single crochet. So just insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, and pull through both loops. And you'll just want to do that in each chain all the way across till the end. Okay, once you're at the end of row one, you're going to want to chain two and then turn your work. This initial chain will not count as a stitch. Starting in this first stitch, you're going to want to do a single crochet stitch. Then a half double crochet stitch. and then a double crochet stitch. And that will all be in the same stitch that you're working those three. And that's our first said stitch. So we'll skip the next two stitches and going in that third stitch, we're going to do another single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all in that same stitch. So we'll be repeating this all the way across the row. So you'll skip two stitches. Then in the third stitch, do a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet stitch. Okay, at the end of row one, when you have three stitches left, you're going to want to skip two, and then in that last stitch on that row, you'll want to do one single crochet stitch. Then you'll want to chain two and turn your work. So for row three, we're going to be repeating the same sedge stitch. So do a single crochet in that first stitch, and then a half double crochet, and a double crochet. Skip two stitches, and then in that third stitch, repeat the same process. And just like row two, we're going to do this all the way across, only at the end of this row, we're going to chain one instead of two. OK, 
Okay, so at the end of row three, skip the two stitches and then in that last stitch, just do one single crochet, then chain one and turn your work. Now rows four through six, we're gonna be doing a single crochet all the way across. So starting in that first stitch, do one single crochet and then repeat in each stitch all the way across. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. For the next two rows, rows five and six, you'll repeat the same as row four, doing single crochets all across and chaining one at the end and then turning your work. For row seven, it's going to be single crochet all the way across again, starting in the first stitch. But at the end of this row, you're going to chain two. Okay, at the end of row seven, finish up your single crochet stitches, chain two, and then turn your work. For row eight, we're going to be repeating the sedge stitch all the way across again. So starting in that first stitch, you're going to want to do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet stitch. Skip two stitches and repeat that process. And do that all the way across, just as in rows two and three. And at the end of the row, you want to chain two and turn. You will continue this all the way through row 18. Okay, at the end of row 18, you're going to chain two, turn your work. Row 19 is still the sedge stitch. So you'll be going into that first stitch, doing a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet again, skipping two, and then repeating the process in the third stitch. At the end of this row, though, you'll only be chaining one because we will be going back into single crochets all the way across in the next row. Okay, for rows 20 through 22, starting in the first stitch, you're going to be doing a single crochet and then single crocheting all the way across the row. At the end of the row, you'll chain one and turn your work. Then on row 23, going to do the same thing except the end of the row is a chain two instead of one. Okay at the end of row 23 after your last single crochet you'll chain two and then turn your work and in the next two rows rows 24 and 25 we're going to be doing this sedge stitch again. So starting in the first stitch, you'll do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet. Then skip two stitches, and in the next stitch, you'll do the single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet again. Do that all the way across for row 24, and chain two. In row 25, you'll do the same thing, except at the end of the row, you're going to chain one. Okay, so at the end of row 25, we're chaining one, and then we're turning our work. For row 26, we're going to do a single crochet into each stitch, 
starting with the first stitch. After you do those all the way across the row, you can fasten off and weave in your ends. 